Hey there, Ride the Car Guy here, and today, I am so freaking excited. So over a month ago, you'll remember, I sent this block and the heads off to a machine shop to get worked on. They were being a little cryptic about how long it was gonna take, and sure enough, it took well over a month just to get this back to me. All I had done on this was a clean and a hone. So they dipped it in a little chemical bath, sprayed it down, and then honed each cylinder. I'm still glad I had them do it. The underside looks wonderfully clean. The front and rear, of course, look great, and the cylinders look wonderful as well. The shop still has the heads. They said they needed more time for that. Uh, but at least now we can get going on building the block back up, and then when we do get the heads back, it's just slap it on and then get the rest of the accessories installed. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna put our crankshaft back in, gonna put in our pistons and our rods and get everything put back together and put up to spec. I've already done a couple things to the block. Of course, as you can see, I painted it and I love the way that looks. I also painted the front timing cover and the lower oil pan. So as you see those things come on, you'll see I went through and refinished them all. I'm really excited about the way that's gonna look. And I also went through and made sure that the surface, the mating surface for the cylinder head is nice and flat. And of course, clean that all up with some Scotch-Brite. And then I also went through the crank and checked out each and every single oil passage to make sure all of those were clean and then went through and blew it all out with air. It's important that that gets done because if you don't make sure those passages are nice and clear, then you're literally just gonna be pushing any grit that might be in there straight into your new bearings and your crank journals. So let's do it. Now before we grab our bearings, I'm going to use some mineral spirits and we're just gonna clean off the surfaces that the bearings are going to sit in. We wanna make sure that this is nice, clean, and dry. And then we're gonna set the bearings in dry on the back side, and then eventually oil them before we set down the crank. Now I know there's about 50 different products you could use to clean this. Uh, you know, kind of do your own research, figure out what works best for you. I'm using mineral spirits and a uh, microfiber, and then I'm just gonna blow it off with some air uh, before we set everything down. Just in case any fibers made it off of our low lint towels, we wanna make sure we get those blown away. Next, we're going with our main bearings. I went with an engine tech kit here, and we have the kit, it looks just like this, and it has our uppers and our lowers. And you'll know the lowers because they're gonna have holes in them that will of course be for the, the oil passages, and then the top ones won't have any at all. I'm just gonna take these and just give them a quick wipe down with some mineral spirits, and then I'm gonna push them in and then of course aligning the little mark. You'll see a little mark here that needs to be aligned with the grooves inside the block. So here's our groove corresponding with the little stopper inside of your bearing. There we go. That one's looking good. And I'm gonna repeat that for the next four. Now before we set our crank in, we need to have the bearings oiled and we need to put in our thrust washers. So I'm gonna go grab those, set those in, get everything oiled up and we'll set our crank down. With our thrust washers, you'll see, uh, it's keyed, right? You'll actually see a little slot that they'll fit into. There's two different kinds. One has a little protrusion sticking out right here and obviously that won't fit in this, right? So I'm just gonna grab a little oil, rest it against here, hope that it you know, kind of sticks there and stays while we get the crankshaft in. Also make sure that your oil grooves, which you'll see here, they're only on one side, Make sure those are sticking out towards the crankshaft arm. There we go. Yeah, that's looking pretty sticky. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Excellent. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna rub oil on the surface. Get that oiled up. In fact, I'll just do that with all these. Get them all oiled up. Two quick things. I made sure that these oil passages were clear. I blew them out. Uh, off camera. And then also on our crank, we're gonna clean the journals one more quick time uh, just to make sure they're nice and clean before setting this in. Quick note, I noticed when I came back to my crank, I saw a faint line uh, on one of the surfaces where the rod connects and uh, I uh, didn't like it. So I went through and did a bit of like sort of home polishing if you will. And that was just uh, the high grit sandpaper and uh, WD-40 method. There's about 250 videos at least on YouTube about that. So I didn't go, <laughs> I didn't really make that for you, but uh, I went and polished these a little bit with some high grit sandpaper to even that out. So anyways, just wanna let you know that. 
One last quick spray here. I'm just using some brake parts cleaner to get this done quickly. Don't basically just not trying to transfer contaminants from one spot to another. Just grab it and move it over. All right, with that in, I'm going to uh, resist turning it too much because uh, those thrust washers will spin with the, uh, with the surface of the crank. And then I'm gonna go get my caps, make sure those are clean, make sure the bearings are clean and get those on here. These also have a notch that need to be lined up. You'll see it inside the cap, and then of course on the bearing itself. I'm gonna start with number three here, and you'll see I have the thrust uh, washers installed here. And then also, of course, I mean, this one has the grooves in it. You can't miss it, but all the caps have their numbers on it and you want to install it with the uh, arrow facing forward. And this would be forward, right? Where, the, where all the accessories are. And then of course your drive plate and transmission are in the back. So I'm going to grab these. And I, again, I put oil on, oh, that went well. Well, got to clean this again and try it again with the thrust washer, but the oil didn't keep it in place. All right, let's try this again, shall we? All right, I don't like that. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try putting oil on the crank, on the side of the crank. Should go there anyways. And I'm gonna try to set these in place first on the inside of the crank. Let's see how that goes. Put that there. Yeah, there we go. I think that's gonna be a little more promising here. There we go. That looks a little better. Perfect. And now they should slide directly into the grooves in the number three cap. Are they? Uh, it's hard to tell. Yeah, that one looks good. This one does not. Man, I'm having a hard time here. There we go. Woohoo! Now they're seated. Just had to do a little finessing here, and now it looks good. So I'm gonna give this a very light tap. They say you can tap it with a mallet to get it to seat. I'm gonna start out very lightly and very slowly to do that. Oh, that looks good. Very good. Okay. Now that that's in, I'm just gonna give this a little spin. Make sure everything's smooth. Yeah, that's good. All right, perfect. So now, grab the other ones and slap them all in. Gonna be a heck of a lot easier than that. Now when we're installing our bolts, they want you to get some oil on the threads and some oil on the surface in which you're gonna be tightening it down on the caps. They say it's for proper torquing, kind of seems like witchcraft, but whatever, I'm gonna do it. Uh, don't douse it in there because you don't want too much uh, oil getting in there, but uh, get a little bit of oil on there and drop them all in, and I'm gonna hand tighten them for now just to get everything in place. All right, I'm just gonna get these uh, bolts 
just screw down, effectively hand tighten them. I'm just gonna use a drill, spin them down and not put any real torque on them just yet. Next, I'm gonna do the same exact process with the side bolts. All right, we're next going to do the initial tightening of the mains and the subs. The mains we're gonna put in at 29 foot-pounds and the subs at 22. And uh, we're gonna do them in this order. Next round in at 22. Next up, it tells us to do the same thing again, but this time in an order of degrees past tight. So everything is at, well, these are all at 29, these are all at 22. And now we need to do an additional 40 degrees on the mains and 30 degrees on the subs. For that, I have this little angle tool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set, let me grab the socket here. We're gonna set this on the socket and then we're going to clamp this down somewhere where it won't rotate. Let's see, if we, maybe right on that bolt, that would be nice. There we go. And what this is going to allow us to do is to move this piece independently of the dial and I can take this little uh, lock screw, unscrew it, find zero, there we go. And then when I tighten this, I know as I turn what 40 degrees is. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a breaker because it doesn't matter, right? We're not using a torque. And now 40 degrees, here we go. Ah, excellent. Reset on the next bolt, do it again in the same order we did before. All right, at this point, just get your side bolts down to 36 foot-pounds and our crank is installed. All right, and that is one installed crank. Now, what you wanna do is rotate this, make sure it feels nice and smooth. This one does. Listen for any like weird rubbing. Nope, sounds like well-oiled surfaces rubbing against each other, so. Like I said earlier in the series, I'm not gonna show measurements during the series, basically uh, checking all tolerances. But uh, the next thing we would check is uh, going to be our uh, end, uh, end play. So basically how much the crankshaft moves back and forth inside the block. But I am gonna make a YouTube short on that, so check it out if you do wanna see it. All right, we made some excellent progress today. What I'm gonna do is uh, go home, which is 30 feet that way. Uh, have some beer, eat some food, and then I'm gonna start with this again tomorrow. So uh, tomorrow we're gonna to install our pistons. I'm gonna show you how to throw the rings on, uh, compress the rings, slide it in, and get these things connected. So, uh, well, I'll see you in just a minute. And we're back. So yesterday we did the crank. Today we need to do the piston. So I have everything set up behind me. Let's move over there and we'll talk about ringing them. The first step to installing rings on your pistons is of course making sure that your pistons are as clean as they can be. Now if you remember, mine were pretty darn funky, but since I had my block sent out to be cleaned, I sent these out and got them cleaned as well. Even if you do send them out, you wanna make sure that your ring grooves are nice and clean. And there's a couple oil passages here. There's two on each side that you wanna make sure are clear as well. You can literally stick, I have like a, a mini pick, that you can stick through it and you can actually even see it on the other side when it comes through. So if all that's good, you just wanna grab your ring kit, which will come in separate packages. And it'll literally say, top groove one, second groove two, third groove three, and then it'll have uh, two packages for the third groove because you have your ring spacer and then your rings. It's a pretty simple process. It even comes with directions and the kit that you buy will likely just tell you what you need to do. But, uh, but I'll go ahead and show you anyways. When you're installing rings, you wanna make sure that the gaps don't line up with each other. And in fact, the manual for the Titan tells you where it wants the ring gaps and I'll show you where they are right now. So with that in mind, I'm gonna start with the third groove and work my way up. So with our third groove, we have a little oil spacer and we have the oil ring and we're gonna need two of those. So two rings and a spacer for the third groove. Since the bottom ring goes, it goes ring, spacer, ring, 
grab a first string here and put the gap approximately where it's going to be when it's installed. Simply set it into the groove and you can just spiral it down until it fits into the ring groove. There you go, easy as that. Then grab your spacer and these spacers will have little waves of course, but when they reach the gap, they kind of scoop up like this and I'll show you a picture to be a little more clear, but the little tabs that are sticking up, you want pointing to the top of the piston. So install that in the same way, but make sure your gap is approximately where it needs to be during install. Putting it into the groove, and then just spiraling it down. There you go. Repeat that process for the top ring. And that goes here. And again, just spiral it in. All right, excellent. Then we're gonna work on our second groove or our second ring. Uh, this ring is directional, so you wanna be really careful that you put it in the right spot because it has a beveled edge. And there will be a little indicator here. In this case, it's a little dot. Sometimes it'll actually have the word top put into it or pressed into it. And you wanna make sure that the dot is facing up or of course, if it says top, you want the top to be facing the top. These are a lot harder to expand. So I went ahead and got myself some uh, ring pliers. So again, we wanna take our gap and put it approximately where it needs to be. Grab our ring pliers and use it to make the ring just wide enough to get over the cylinder or over the piston, I keep calling it a cylinder, and into its groove. There we go, excellent. Then grab your top. The top in this kit is not directional. So if you look on both sides, there's no little uh, indentation anywhere. So just put your gap where it needs to be, grab your pliers and get it into the groove. So you'll see all three are in and they're seated. They're gonna look a little loose at first because they're obviously moving around and you just stretch them a little bit to get them over. But we're gonna compress them down and then they're gonna of course push against the uh, push against the side of the cylinder wall. So go ahead and repeat that process seven more times to get your pistons ready, and then we'll go put them into the block. Now for the bottom of the pistons, you wanna treat it just like you treated the main bearings. You wanna pull out the old ones, and then make sure all the surfaces are clean, install the new ones, and then oil just the inside. Again, I'm gonna use mineral spirits to clean the surface uh, that the bearing sits on, and the bearings themselves before install. There is also a little oil passageway you wanna make sure is clear in each piston. It just literally shoots out right here. So you can look down it and see, or of course use some compressed air to make sure that's clear as well. While you have the compressed air, make sure you dry everything off before installing these in. In my kit, all the rod bearings came with the hole. So uh, even though this side doesn't have a hole, so it doesn't really matter, just line up and make sure on this side where there is a hole, that it lines up when you install. Looking good. These also have the little tabs that uh, are effectively make it keyed so you can't really mess it up if you wanted to. There you go, very good. Now we're ready to get our ring compressor, oil it up and get it installed. Over on your block, uh, find cylinder one and make sure that your crank is at bottom dead center, which obviously takes the arm and pushes it as far away as it can be while we push the piston in. This is also opportunity to make sure that the cylinder is oiled and that the surface that the rod's gonna connect to is of course oiled and cleaned as well. Once you're feeling comfortable with that, we also wanna get our piston rings lubricated with oil and then uh, compressed to go in. I'm gonna take a little receptacle, and right now this has water in it, so there's nothing crazy in here. And then I'm going to empty this, dry it, and put some oil in it, and then I'm gonna dip the top three rings in there. And this is also our last opportunity to make sure that our ring gaps are in the right position. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those generally where they should be, dip it, and compress. All right, so I have the rings where I want them. Now I'm gonna dip the whole head in here, 
There we go. Ooh, just enough oil to not completely fill the piston. Nice. Don't need to go crazy here, of course. Just get it in there. All right. And then if you're using one of these, I actually went ahead, well, not if you're using one, you must use one of these. When you're using this, uh, you know, I use this as a rental because even though they're cheap, I, I think to myself, how often am I gonna use it? So uh, make sure it's very clean before you use it or else you're just scraping crap off of this into your block. I'm gonna put the rings in the center between the two things that squeeze here. So I'm gonna do that, there we go. And then it should come with a little tool here to spin it tight. And when you get close, make sure that nothing is out of sorts here. Nothing popped out or anything got weird. Appears to be good. All right. So we wanna cinch this down nice and good. Gives us the best chance of getting it into the cylinder here. So it's all compressed in there, got some oil in there, and now we're gonna bring it over. Also, I might as well oil this now as well. Make sure that's all good. Now there's a dot on the top of the piston. And of course, it's, these are all numbered. They, uh, they actually numbered them for me at the machine shop after I numbered them. But regardless, uh, you wanna make sure you're putting in piston one into cylinder one, and then make sure that dot is facing forward towards the front of the engine. Slowly guide it in. There we go. Now it's seated using the very bottom of the piston, right? It has that little piece there that I, had, that I left sticking out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back of a hammer and very gently tap the top of the cylinder, or excuse me, top of the piston, and hope that it goes in without issue. I'm gonna push down on this so it's firmly seated against the surface. And it looks like we're a wee bit off, there we go. Nope. Immediately popped out. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I can already see a problem. So we're gonna slide this out. And as you can see, the ring popped out before making it into the cylinder. And that's because I didn't have this completely flat. It's, up, it's tilted up a little bit on one side. So let's go reset it and try again. All right, so we have this reset. I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and flat against this surface here before I start tapping it in. Get it lined up, all right. Rotate it until that dot is pointing forward. And this time, yeah, this time it looks like it's flat all the way around. So, grab my hammer again, and away we go. Make sure the bottom looks good, yeah. Nope, not sure what the problem is. Oh, I lied, just made it. All right, very cool. So now, uh, don't push it any further down because we need to go get it connected to the crank before we, uh, before we start messing with this. Just because I'm paranoid, I'm actually gonna strap a uh, piece of masking tape I have some real strong wide masking tape across this, just so when we flip it over, there's no chance of it falling out. It's probably ridiculous, but who cares? Just let me be me. All right, let's rotate. And then I'm gonna also hold the, uh, the rod because when we rotate, it's gonna flop around, right? And I don't want to smack the cylinder wall. There we go. And then I can gently set it down here. Good. All right, with that in place, we can grab this and start pushing the cylinder in. Hopefully you can see that coming up until it of course joins up to the arm here. All right. Grab your cap, make sure that's also sufficiently oiled 
And if you lose track, you'll notice you have some numbers here. You want to match the one up with the one, but basically you don't want to be switching the caps with other, uh, with other rods here. So we'll just slide that in, push down on both sides. There we go. And then I'm just going to go in and finger thread my bolts. Actually, that's a lie. You got to oil these first, get a little sheen of oil on these and then run them through. There's one. Fucking smooth rye. Well, luckily it just fell inside the back of the piston here as opposed to uh, smacking into one of the cylinder walls, but I'm an idiot nonetheless. All right, I retrieved it. Uh, I had a little magnet. That's what I get for uh, doing things with oily fingers. Anyways, I applied some oil to these threads and I'm going to just run both in and then we'll uh, talk about specs. So we are bottom dead center approximately for cylinder two. So I'm going to flip it back over and repeat with cylinder two. Now that we're at this stage, we can torque these down. These go in at 11 foot pounds. And then after that, they go 90 degrees. At this point, and as you go down each one, you wanna make sure that you can still turn it smoothly that it, nothing's locking up or difficult to move. I think we're in good shape. All right, if you just repeat that process three more times, your, uh, your pistons are installed. All right, with that complete, there's just one more thing I wanna knock out before we close out this video, uh, and that is the rear main seal. So the rear main seal is of course in the rear, and it's really out of the way, and since our crank is back in, we can easily get that accomplished and check it off the list. If you recall, it was on a plate that was just screwed into the back of the block. And so we just need to take that plate, pop out the old seal, pop the new one in, RTV it, and screw it onto the block. Prying these off can be pretty tough. Uh, and it's, I like this design, don't get me wrong, but it does make it difficult to pry it off because there's nothing, you know, you don't have any real leverage. So uh, I have an idea. It's either a genius idea or a really stupid one, but we're about to find out. And that's just to take this piece of wood and just take some wood screws and screw them into this piece of wood so I have something to actually lever on. Four total should be fine. All right, now that's really on there. And now we can grab our seal puller and we should hopefully be able to pop this right out. Our little seal puller, which is designed to really kind of slide in, even with the crank in place, has these little hooks. Hopefully we can throw these on here. Ah, yeah, very simple. Excellent. With this off, we just uh, clean up this surface, go get our new one and pound it down. All right, we have our surface nice and clean and I have my new seal and I'm just gonna set it in here. It should have a sort of a tapered edge on the very top or, or excuse me, the very front edge just to get it to sit in there. And then we just have to hammer it in. There's a tool you can buy from Nissan that's crazy expensive. I uh, did this rear main seal on my Xterra, I don't know, like a year ago now, and uh, I made my own tool, and I made it out of this PVC here. So I literally just bought these two pieces, screwed them together, and it fits perfectly on the rear main seal. So uh, this was like $4, and the other tool was like 100 and something dollars. So uh, saved a little bit of money, but get this lined up, and we're just gonna gently hammer this in until it's flat with the surface. Make sure it's going in evenly. If it's not, tap on the side that's a little too high. There we go. Looking good so far. Don't smash your fingers. It looks flush, but 
I managed to bash the spring right out of it. Maybe it's just loose. Let me take a look here. Could have just smacked it too hard. Yeah, it's fine. There we go. Well, it's pretty darn easy, I have to say. Screwing it into the wood was very, very helpful, getting it out and putting it in. So, um, highly recommended. Excellent, let's go install it. Now with RTV, preparation is key. Now you wanna make sure that both surfaces are nice and clean and dry. So I went ahead and used some mineral spirits to clean these off and then dried them off with a dry cloth. The process is pretty simple. We're just gonna put about a two millimeter bead all the way around on the inside of the bolt holes and of course in the little crevices as well. Once we do that, we just have to put it onto the back of the engine and then we need to finger tighten the bolts and then wait one hour and then tighten them down to torque, which is pretty low if I remember. Let's see, yeah, 80 inch pounds. Okay, so not, not terribly high. I'm using Permatex Ultra Gray Gasket Maker. This is the sort of the brand name equivalent of what Nissan recommends. I'm just gonna break this loose and cut the tip to about two millimeters. All right, let's do this. All right, clearly I need to uh, make this wider. I'm like shaking trying to get this out here. There we go. Just keep making your way around. There we go, right near the end. All right, just gonna go back through and fix a couple little spots here. No big deal. All right, I'm uh, good at a lot of things, but uh, <laughs> this really isn't one of them as you can see. Let's go take it to the block and get it installed. All right, over on the block, before we put this on, we're gonna want to grab some oil and just run your finger all the way around the back end of it. And then of course you want some oil on the seal itself as well. Once you're ready, bring it over and line it up. There's a couple pins that you can push it onto that will kind of guide it into place. Then gently push around the edge of the seal to push it up against the back of the crank. These pins are giving me a little bit of trouble. I'm gonna grab something to kind of hammer them in. There we go. All right, we're gonna grab our bolts, get them all finger tightened. I'm gonna use a ratchet, but I'm just not gonna tighten them down at all. Just easier to spin. So as you can see, once it's on, you'll see a, a nice little bead of RTV kind of sticking out all the way around the outside edge, other than of course around the bolts. But at this point, we just need to wait one hour and then come back and torque it down. All righty, it's been an hour and uh, I have my ratchet set to 80 inch pounds. And it doesn't tell me anything about a particular uh, order. So I'm just gonna start at the top go down here and then do this one and then kind of go back and forth, doesn't really matter. Excellent, that's that. That's gonna do it for this video. This is about, about as much as I'm willing to do while the heads are still away. But coming up in the next video, part nine, we're gonna be installing the cylinder heads, getting the timing in, and then really that might be where we take a break in this process because at that point it's just taking everything else and just slapping it on the engine with the proper torque spec. If you like this video, I would appreciate it if you could go ahead, scroll down and click that like button. Also click subscribe. Not only are we doing this, but we also have nearly 200 other videos about, uh, of course, the Titan and the Xterra with more coming every week. If you really loved this video and you feel like it saved you a lot of time or money, go ahead, scroll down and click that thanks button to send me a super thanks. All right, I'm gonna go now and uh, clean up the garage again. Bye.